Okay, let's go for it. Greetings, uh, uh, dear dear Libra. This is you, okay? This is you, Libra. This is Terra Illumination, and this is your mini love and relationship generic kind of report thing for August 2018. As you can tell, this is a highly professional operation, and we're going to go for it. Um, now, singles, you can watch this too if you really want, because you can allow for the laws of attraction. You're always radiating energy, and so the question is, what are you attracting back to you? What is being reflected back to you? So you'll see in a moment, if that's you, that's the other, what are you attracting back to you? Okay. So this is the energy of what if. So just please allow for that if you're single. Okay. Otherwise, it's for people who are committed uh, in um, chosen relationships. I'll show you, and actually, let me just do it right now. All right. So we're going to read it like this. We're going to use the Terra Illumination Crucible Spread. It's on the understanding that there's you, dear Libra, significant other, and this third entity, the relationship itself. And in a deeply loving relationship, both parties are aware, and then they commit to the relationship in the old-fashioned way, you know, where the relationship is something in which you invest. It's no longer about you. It's no longer about them. It's about us. And when it turns into us, this is what counts. Okay, Libra? So uh, you probably get this already anyway because of your natural way of being because you are the sign of love and relationship in that respect. So you, maybe you get it. Okay? But some people don't. Uh, but from Terra Illumination perspective, this is what we do. This is how we do it. Okay? The crucible. You'll see in a moment when the spread comes out, the crucible. The crucible is a structure that can withstand intense pressures, you know, the alchemical pressures that occur in relationships as we uh, intimate and we separate, intimate and separate, intimate and separate on a daily basis, monthly, yearly, however we do it, whatever the, uh, the structure and look of your relationship might be. Before we get into the cards, hold on. Uh, it's, a, it's kind of a stressful month for a lot of people, so I wanted to... Um, point this out, just give some extra goodies. These are my own notes. I use them a lot in private readings and so on. But if you want, um, so I'm just sharing this. Uh, so this is for Libra, August 2018. The big calendar moment is the new moon eclipse in Leo, August the 11th in your 11th house. Right here, okay? So that's what it would have looked like on an extremely simplified chart. So you have the Sun, Moon, Mercury, and the North Node over here in Leo. So this is really not much to do with uh, relationships as such, because the relationship axes are over here in the first and seventh house. Love and true love is over here in the fifth, and so on. However, this energy will impact your love life and your relationships in some way, shape, or form or another. I don't think it's much point in going into it too deeply, but with the 11th house, whatever is being eclipsed out of your life in your world, in that part of your life, and whatever is being eclipsed into your life in your world with these new beginnings here, Leo energy in your 11th house, that will affect your relationship with significant others. So over here in the 11th house, we're talking about the energy of like humanity, togetherness, what's good for the what's good for the group, what's good for the team, what's good for people, as opposed to the self, putting the group and the people above the self. So it's kind of a selfless house. On the other hand, with Leo there, it's telling you, how can you be your most selfless self in the most glorious self-oriented way possible? So it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but anyway. Um, it's energy of like wishes and dreams and rewards for what could be. You know, how things could be almost idealized. It's the energy of seeking deep liberation and freedom from all the shackles of uh, humanity and instead focusing on what's good about humanity, togetherness, our friendship, our community. Okay. So expect changes in that department of your life. Let's just leave it at that. Okay. All right. I'm just going to leave it like that. And. We'll uh, we'll get on with the cards immediately. All right, as soon well as soon as we can. All right, so here we go. No jumpers, no flyers, no oracles, no reversals. Okay, 
Uh, we try to keep it as simple as we can here because it's complicated enough just doing this. <laughs> okay, so cards are well shuffled in advance, but I'm going to go to the last second so that you're a witness while I'm getting prepped to pull the to pull the spread for you. Please invite your angels, okay, your spirit guides, your uh, invisible friends from the great beyond, behind the veil, all of it. That's what we do here at Terra Illumination. It is a team effort, okay? Uh, just imagine that Aquarian energy in the 11th house working for you in its most uh, uh, expressive way, okay? And it's happening right now, and you're getting the best of it, okay? No jumpers, no flyers, no oracles, no reversals. We're going to use the... Uh, rudimentary uh, rider weight deck and keep it very simple okay for now uh, things will probably change down the road but for now we're just going to keep it like this <clears throat> so hang in hang in hang in all right we're, we're we're very close now okay so bless these cards people please bless the cards do it from there from your side of the screen bless the cards bless the deck Bless the cut. Bless the reading. Bless terror illumination. Bless yourself. Okay, let's make the best of this. Let's see what happens. We're going to pull the cards now. This is the energy that you're radiating. Think of yourself like a cell phone in voice mode uh, where you can radiate and receive energy simultaneously. Not text, not data. Voice mode. That's what you're doing here. Okay, and in so doing, uh, you're doing the same thing with a significant other over here. Okay, so over here, going into the depths of you, heart and soul, going into the depths of the other, heart and soul, and going to the core, the relationship itself. So this is what I'm talking about when we mentioned the crucible. The crucible is a bowl, bowl. You can Google it if you want. It's a bowl type structure. Typically, they use it in science labs or industry or manufacturing. It's a structure that can withstand intense pressure uh, of alchemical relationships. Uh, al al alchemical reactions that would destroy anything else. So the crucibles are built to withstand intense pressure. And, and in, a, in a decent, strong, loving, caring relationship, both parties are aware that there are going to be periods where they endure intense pressures um, and they need the relationship to, to be able to uh, hold itself intact uh, in order to endure and come out the other side as we intimate and separate, as we intimate and separate in the never-ending dance that is our love between ourselves and our loved ones. Okay. So over here, uh, like prospects, momentum, think of this as a flow. You could almost think of this like a fountain. When you're investing in this, when you invest in this, when the other invests in this, it has a flow. It's like a plant. It has an energy. It's like a fountain. You're generating energy. You're, you're growing and protecting energy. It's like you own a property uh, and you're doing a, a real estate management, property managers or something, and it's joint custody of this thing, the relationship. You guys own this, okay? Maybe you're, you've heard all this before, Libra, because this is your natural turf. But anyway, not everybody has, so I have to allow for that, all right? Look, we're going to look around here. Remember, this is a relationship reading for you. It's not a couple's reading. We're just allowing for the energy of the significant other and the relationship itself. Circumstantially out there, environmentally, you have the Nine of Pentacles. So my feeling here is that, uh, again, this kind of doesn't surprise me because with the Leo Aquarius eclipses and then the Leo New Moon eclipse, uh, that's essentially harmonious for you. The Leo is sextile to you. The Aquarius is trined to you astrologically. So that's all good, juicy, supportive, supportive, supportive energy. So unlike some of the other signs, you might be coming through August in kind of a sweet way where you can feel like all the efforts and work and investments and the labors of the past that have brought you to this point in your life, not just with your relationship, but with yourself and with a significant other, where it's all been worthwhile. So you can feel it as an individual like, wow, I didn't do too badly. And they're like, wow, you know, I didn't do too badly either. Like, you know what? We didn't do too badly. We've got some good stuff going on here, so that's very nice. Uh, I get room to be me. Uh, well, sorry, I get room to be me, and you get room to be you. That's pretty cool. And we can share uh, the bounty that we have created together. Thank you very much. Okay, 
like an investment plan. Let's have a look. What are you radiating? Wow. So maybe you kind of already get it. Maybe deep in your soul, uh, in your mind, in your spirit, you've been aware that this has been building up. And I think this is very much related to the new moon eclipse on August the 11th. Uh, up until then, I think you're just going to have to integrate and endure and soak up and marinate things coming out of the end of the July, July 27th, when we had the Aquarius Leo full moon eclipse. So I think this is very much to do with you getting yourself deeply in alignment with how you have to be going forward from your new understandings of what it's going to take to be you going forward with these new this 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 final closing episode of the Leo Aquarius eclipses in the Leo North Node. You have like attained your like maximum height of self-expression. And now you're having a chance to like live your own truth and express your own truth and understand it from a much broader, more powerful perspective. And that impacts love and relationship. In other words, oh gosh, I was hoping not to go back to this, but I feel we have to. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, Scorpio, let's have a look. Here's Libra. Okay. So what I'm sensing here is that the eclipses, in their own weird, magical, wonderful way, uh, especially, remember, at the end of July, the Leo Aquarius eclipse, the Aquarius part was over here in your fifth house of true love and romance, creativity, fun, expression, uh, self-expression. So that might have been very, very like fruitful for you and exciting to the point where when you come to August the 11th, it all starts to integrate and make sense. You think, oh my gosh, holy bleep. Now I kind of get what Terra Illumination is talking about. Uh, we get the chance to go uh, above and beyond. We get the chance to, let's say, expand uh, your own concepts of like spiritual understanding, uh, your place in humanity, uh, what humanity means to you. Uh, and you get to share that and conduct that in a relationship. In other words, like, Hey, have you any idea what I just lived through? You're not going to believe this. Well, let me tell you. And they're like, oh, well, I did notice that you were kind of going through this really freakoid uh, phase in the last, in July and early August. But, you know, tell me, you might as well just tell me. Okay, well, here's how it is. And they're like, okay, that's cool. Um, so what's for dinner? Should we make out? Or is it your turn to hit on me? Or is it my turn to hit on you? How are we going to do this? And you're like, I was telling you something really, really important. And they say, I know. I get it. I get it. It's okay. I love you. You love me. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. So anyway, let's have a look what the others. What, what, let's have a look at them. Oh, look. But the star card here, my feeling is that they're a little bit distant, like with this Aquarius Leo stuff, uh, you know, the Aquarius energy can be very kind of remote, detached, very much observant, like the scientific observer, completely unemotional, just taking things at the factual levels. So with the star here, you, dear Libra, might be relating with someone who totally gets it, totally understand you, who's totally receptive of what is going on with you as an individual. And from their perspective, it's just like, well, this is so cool. I'm going to just be myself here, which happens to be very beneficial for you because I am on board with you evolving and growing. So uh, because that's good for me. And over here, so with the star energy over here, it's like they're... They're almost acting as a very, very, very subtle. If you can imagine this, you know what happens in relationships where, especially with your, if you are with someone who truly loves you or who's, who's at least involved with you, they can be like inadvertently like a spirit guide. Like they can be almost, you know how you have karmic relationships where you learn a lot and you grow a lot and it's conducted in a day-to-day -day life where it might be, oh, you're doing this job, or you're coming out of college, or you've got kids or mortgages, or you're winding up your life or whatever it is. And it looks like such and such and such on the surface, but deep down, there's this epic spiritual journey. And what's happening is that 
they are your like mirror, your companion, like your spiritual guide, your spiritual guardian angels and protection as you live through your journey. But this could be unspoken. In other words, this is happening like very at very subliminal levels. You might be conducting yourselves as a, as like, just like your average couple, whatever they do, however you do it. But at this, even though we're talking about these at the like fully present solar level, I think a lot of this is happening at the very profound subliminal, subliminal levels too. Excuse me, it's late. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of readings. You can probably tell. Oops. Okay. So, and the beauty of this is that it's like it's granted. It feels like it's granted. It's like a wish. Like you're very you, where Libra are very lucky to have this person in your life in some way, shape, or form, like guidance, like a protection, who's there for you anyway, even when they're not there, they're still there for you in spirit. This is like very, very, to me, it feels like a very, very pure platonic kind of love relationship energy where they're being exactly who they have to be, how they have to be, when, where, how, and why for you to be who you are. But you might not understand it until maybe, I don't know, maybe years from now. So do not be perturbed by what's happening here. Understand that it's all for the good for you. Let's have a look. What are you radiating deep inside over here? Whoa, look at this. This is beautiful, Libra. So you might be either, be, okay, I don't want to load too many heaps of praise on this person over here, but it feels to me like you might be truly getting a glimpse of what it is like to have the healing power of love in your life from up above, okay? In ways that you might not have ever become aware of before because this energy is very Aquarian. It feels very much to do with um, what works best for the human as a human being as opposed to a person uh, needs and desires and wants in the simple three-dimensional levels. I feel this is very, very like spiritual energy here. So you're just being your Libra self, evolving, growing, coming to these like almost shocking new awakenings so that by the time you get to the end of September, uh, maybe you can't define it right now, but something big is happening. Some big change is happening where like you are more loving than ever before and you are more loved than ever before. Your desire is to be more loving. Your desire is to be more loved than ever before. Now, what is it exactly that defines love? That's a whole other thing. My feeling is that we're th through the reflections that you're getting from a significant other, your definitions of love uh, that you knew, let's say, before the eclipses is going to be very different from what happens as you grow and evolve coming outside of the other side of the eclipses. Because this feels very like spiritual and platonic here and very much about the highest frequency vibrations of love energy that um, you are receiving, that you are radiating, that you deserve, that you can offer, and that you can receive. Okay, so to me this is to me this is really beautiful. I'm happy for you, Libra. I don't know how that translates into a three-dimensional working relationship, so to speak, in everyday life. You know, who's going to pick up the groceries? Whose turn it is? Is it to uh, put out the trash or whatever? I don't know. You can reinterpret those. Uh, details, okay, Libra, but for now, let's keep going. What are they radiating, okay? My feeling is that they are radiating like, okay, I'll just say like mastery, mastery of the three-dimensional realms with the King of Pentacles here, mastery of the actual realities of what's happening in your relationship in ways that are only good, only good for you, only good for them, only good for you at the soul of you, only good for them at the soul of themselves, in ways that count, literally physical evidence of love, where they are, they are bringing like everything that they have to the table, and they're doing this knowing that they can do this. They have this to offer. 
uh, because they are the masters of this. It's almost like they are showing you the way. They are showing you, it's almost like they are the one who is blasting these things open for you to come to these new levels of awareness of what actually is possible in a loving relationship. Again, how does that translate in 3D? That's a whole other thing. But it looks like uh, they are very aware of you and the wealth that you bring to the relationship and the wealth and abundance that they bring to the relationship and having uh, for them having a high level of mastery and let's say physical worldly abilities to be there for you in a way that works for you so that you get this so that you actually get the chance to experience this because I don't think this is to, to me this is kind of like a frequent reading for the for the for you to have the chance to experience this this beautiful ace of cups this wouldn't be here unless you'd earned it this is a card of sacred opportunity so it's like you've earned this you have earned the chance to be brought into high levels of new levels of awareness of what love really means uh, again reinterpret how you want uh, because they're bringing everything to the table uh, with the best of intentions for you and uh, they've also gone through their own amazing spiritual journeys and transformations and morphing to be able to get to this point where they have mastery in the physical realm to like to create the environment and the opportunity for this to happen for you to me it's kind of a bit of a jaw-dropping type of feeling I'm getting here for you uh, not in a scary way but almost like when you're like a little kid and you go to like the uh, marine park somewhere and you're standing up next to the big shark window and you're like a little kid you just look in the window and your jaw is dropping and your eyes are open you're just totally freaked amazed at the wonders that you always kind of imagined existed but now you're actually seeing it and it's just magnificent that's what I'm sensing okay let's have a look at the core okay <laughs> so this is something to celebrate in other words it's almost like pretend you're the little kid at the marine park and you're 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 blown away by what's happening and let's say the significant other is this amazing creature on the other side of the glass just being their true self now and you've never known that part of themselves or, or that they existed at this level and you're now witnessing this for the first time in your life and you're realizing oh my god but you don't even say it because your jaw is dropping your eyes are popped open and you are in a state of serene silence as you witness this beautiful thing uh, happening in front of you and this is something to celebrate between the two of you in other words as the moment disappears and you kind of look around like like you do when you're a little kid with your folks or whatever and you look at your friends like wow did you just see that did you just see what happened oh my god and then you celebrate it's just like oh thank you Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here in my life. I really, really love you. I didn't know I loved you so much. I didn't know you loved me so much. That's how awesome our relationship is. I didn't even know how awesome our relationship was. Thank you. And they're kind of going like, hmm, that's okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad you understand now. Um, I guess this was just the right moment for this to happen. I do love you. I do love you very much. And like, oh, I love you. God, I love you too. Like, but what do we do now like oh i don't know i mean i'm just i'm just being who i am so does that mean i'm just being who i am like, yes yes so it just the show goes on the show goes on yes yes it's, it's perfectly okay this is normal wow okay so let's have a look where does this take us okay to like new heights to, to me it feels like it takes you to new heights almost like like you cross this threshold of relationship dynamics the understanding of what uh, what you guys have got together and then what do you do with that that's a whole other thing uh, to me this is like a little bit above and beyond a traditional relationship or a traditional relationship reading 
where it's about uh, you, Libra, reaching new heights. They're kind of already in that zone and it's really beneficial for you and it takes you into a situation where it's almost like you have been inspired by all of this and now you have the ability to inspire others by all of this so if things get very platonic here very like romantic in the very purest most platonic way and there is uh, some form of deep love going on here where things move to the next level, whatever that is. Sometimes that happens in love relationships where something that might have been carnal uh, becomes more platonic, more spiritualized. People can still leave, love each other very deeply, but the, trans, the relationship morphs because you realize it's much more to do with the what's good for everybody as opposed to what can I get out of you or what can I get out of you it's like you've evolved and grown beyond this okay so I see this as really good for both of you because it's like your experience here is validating for them it makes it feel like it's, it's worth their while having been with you and uh, being with you uh, because this is glorious now again how that translates for you into your three-dimensional life that's a whole other thing I don't predict the future here um, it's up to you what you make of this uh, to me this is a little bit above and beyond boy girl man woman traditional type relationship uh, lover and lovers uh, husbands and wives this is much more to feel it feels much more like on a spiritual level to me anyway I hope you get something out of this uh, please make the best of it. it looks like it's really good for you and it's good for the other but I don't want to tell you in the exact hows. Okay, that's up to you. Okay, so let's just leave it like that. Okay, there is the crucible. Uh, anyway, you you can you can see it all again on the action replay. Watch for your uh, sun, moon, and rising, especially if they're all different, and cross watch for your significant others. Okay, all the best, Libra. Thank you so so much for visiting. Take care.